Hey everyone, Combo here, back with another Empires and Puzzles video, and it is another month and another Ninja Tower event. We do have one new ninja that we're going to do a hero review on in this video, Ito, and we're going to take a look at the other two featured heroes. Real quick though, if you do enjoy this video or find it helpful, hit that like button, and make sure you're subscribed to my channel so you can see my future videos. So for those of you who like the tower events, maybe you are excited, I actually finished in the top 100 the last two months in a row, so I'm hoping to do that again. I actually did a video a couple months ago on how to get top 100 and what you should be doing throughout the tower event. I will pin a comment with the link to that video down below. If you guys haven't checked out that video, definitely go do so. The rewards aren't great in the tower events, but if you need emblems, then this is a great opportunity to get those. You can get 800 emblems for getting in the top 100, which is a lot. Personally, I am going to try to get top 100 again, but even if you get top 1000, you're going to get 70 emblems of each of the 10 classes, so you're still getting 700 emblems, which is still a pretty decent reward for minimal effort in my opinion and you really don't need to use a lot of items. Definitely take a look at that video if you haven't already, but let's take a look at our first featured hero. This is a brand new hero, Ito. He is a nature hero, is a ranger class, and if we take a look at his base stats, he has 1184 attack, 1184 shield, and 1854 health. The ninja family bonuses are pretty cool, Depending if you have one, two, or three ninjas, they're going to have a 5, 10, or 15% chance to dodge normal attacks and special skills. They will also have a chance to counterattack with 60, 90, or 120% of the damage received. I've definitely been going up against more defenses that have multiple ninjas, so having that 10 or 15% chance to dodge regular attacks and special skills has definitely been, I would say, a little more annoying than it should be. And then also with the counterattack, they also have a passive that was given as a buff in one of the recent updates. Enemy minions inherit minus 50% less health when summoned. So that is definitely very helpful as well, especially when you're talking about some heroes that can summon minions that have about 2000 health. And that's not even something that you need a special for, that's just a passive. That will happen automatically so long as your ninja hero is in your lineup and is still alive. All right, taking a look at Ito's special, his first charge. Now, this is going to usually summon in about five tiles, so keep that in mind. This will deal 400% damage to the target, boosts all allies' health by 25% of the damage dealt. That target gets minus 35% mana generation for two turns. If I click on this little question mark, it says the same thing it does every time we see something like this. Affects only mana generated from matching tiles or mana generation by the defense team at the end of their turn. Their second charge, which usually activates in about 10 tiles depending on your mana increase, this will deal 425% damage to the target and nearby enemies, boosts all allies' health by 25% of the damage dealt, and the target and nearby enemies will have minus 40% mana generation for four turns. The third charge, and this usually takes about 15 tiles to get to, you can increase that with mana generation, but this will deal 450% damage to all enemies, boosts all allies' health by 25% of the damage dealt, and all enemies get minus 45% mana generation for 6 turns. Personally, I really like heroes that give health as part of the percentage that you attack from, and this will also boost the health of your allies, so it has a chance to exceed your max health, which is definitely pretty cool and not something that is common with these types of allies who heal as a percentage of the attack. If we take a look at Ito's double limit broken stats, he's going to have 1728 attack, 1575 shield, and 2526 health. His ether power is special boost, so at the start of each turn, this hero's special skill deals an additional 30% damage for 6 turns. So keep that in mind, depending on which mana charge you're trying to go for in those first 6 turns, you're going to get an additional plus 30% for just those first 6 turns. So make sure you're aware of when that's going to go away, because that might make a difference if you are going to use that first mana charge or the second mana charge, or if you're trying to wait for the third mana charge. Ito seems like a pretty cool hero, a very hard hitter who heals your team as well and gives negative mana generation for your opponents. 
I know a lot of people like the ninjas because of how useful they are against minion summoners. If I were to rate Ito on a scale of 1 to 10, I'd actually give him a 9 probably. He seems like a really, really good hero. All right, let's take a look at the other featured heroes in this portal. We have Iga. I personally love Iga. In the midweek war this week, I used him to pretty much single-handedly take out a team. It was a 7,700 team power tune squad team with heroes that were all double limit broken and had all master class emblems. It was pretty insane. I did not have to do much extra damage other than just get Iga's one fiend on everybody. So like I said, definitely check out that video from the Midweek War if you haven't seen it already. But let's take a look at his base stats first. He has a 1275 attack, a 1054 shield, and 1720 health. For his first mana charge, he summons a Kunai Fiend for the target. The Fiend damages the enemy with 150% attack every turn. The Kunai Fiend absorbs healing and disappears when it has absorbed health equal to 45% of the owner's max health. And the Kunai Fiend explodes after three turns, dealing 1,850 damage to its target. The second mana charge is going to summon the Kunai Fiend for the target and nearby enemies. The Fiend damages for 175% attack every turn, and it disappears when it has consumed 50% of its owner's max health. After three turns, it will deal 2,000 damage to its target. So that one's for three enemies. The third mana charge summons the Kunai Fiend for all enemies. The Fiend damages the enemy with 200% attack every turn, and the Kunai Fiend absorbs 55% of its owner's max health and then will disappear. The Kunai Fiend explodes after three turns, dealing 2,250 damage to its target. Really fun fact about Iga as well as he does pair nicely with heroes that increase the amount of damage an enemy receives. So think about heroes like Hammer Clang or Hammer Tusk, where the enemies get 30% extra damage for Hammer Clang, and I think it's 50% damage actually with Hammer Tusk. If you have Hammer Tusk, then your enemies are now going to be receiving 3,375 damage when that Kunai Fiend explodes. Personally, I do not have Hammer Tusk. I do have Hammer Clang, though, and I have tested it out, and it definitely works. Iga is part of the Cleric class, of course, has the same family bonus and the same passive with the 50% health of minions. When we take a look at his Dumbo Limit Broken stats, he has 1799 attack, 1372 shield, and 2463 health. His Aether Power is Fiend Resist, so at the start of each battle, this hero is immune to new fiends for six turns. So not the best of Aether Powers, but Iga is definitely a very, very solid hero. I would really love to rate Iga a 10 out of 10, honestly, but considering he's really just kind of an offensive hero, I cannot rate him a 10 out of 10. And the reason I say that he's an offensive hero, because if you have him on defense, as somebody going up against Iga, you can just bring an extra healer and make sure that you time your heal so that when Iga Fiend gets summoned to you, you just make sure that you heal that Fiend away. Obviously, you need to make sure that you have a high leveled healer, somebody like Nautica or Cleopatra or Toon Vivica, but there are definitely healers that will give you that 55% or more heal. So I wouldn't put Iga on a defense, but he is an extremely useful offensive hero. I'm still going to give him a 9 out of 10, though, because Iga is just that good. And our third featured hero is Tora. If we look at Tora's base stats, she has 1233 attack, 1102 shield, and 1728 health. For her first mana charge, she's going to deal 400% damage to the target, deals additional 35% damage for each minion or mega minion owned by the enemy, up to 750% damage in total. The attack bypasses defensive buffs. The second mana charge is going to deal 425% damage to the target and nearby enemies, deals an additional 35% damage for each minion or mega minion owned by enemies, up to 775% damage in total. The attack bypasses defensive buffs. And the third mana charge deals 450% damage to all enemies, deals an additional 35% damage for each minion or mega minion owned by the enemies, up to 800% damage in total. The attack bypasses defensive buffs. Tora is a barbarian class, of course, has the same family bonus and same passive with the minions. If we take a look at her max stats, she has 1746 attack, 1394 shield, and 2460 health. Her Aether Power is Special Boost, so she's going to get that plus 30% damage for 6 turns. So another one you want to make sure you are aware of when that Special Boost Aether Power is going to go away after 6 turns, because it could play a factor in how you time her special. 
Sortora, obviously a very hard hitter, a very strong hero, but she's pretty much just an attacker. Obviously, that attack is going to go up based off of how many minions or mega minions the opponents have. Her passive, obviously, is very useful, but considering she's just primarily attacker, I'm going to rate her a 7 out of 10. She's a very hard hitter, but she doesn't really have anything extra that sets her apart in her special, in my opinion. Still definitely a solid hero, though, and any of the ninjas that have that new passive, I would definitely recommend leveling up if you have them. All right, so I do have my coins that I got as a reward for finishing in the top 100 in the last Ninja Tower event, so we are going to use those, see if we can get lucky. Let's take a look at the pull rates on these legendary heroes. So a legendary event hero will have a 1.5% chance of being pulled, and a legendary featured event hero has a 1% chance. So not the best odds, but not the worst odds. Obviously, you're getting a really, really good hero unless if you pull one of the older ones, and most of those are outdated in my opinion. But we're going to try our luck here and see if we can get one of these new ones with these two poles that I've got. First up, three-star Valen and our second pole. Come on, Zynga, give me something good. Kalani. All right, not what we're looking for, obviously. I am saving my gems probably for the wasps when they eventually come in the game. I don't know if you guys have heard about those, but we will eventually be having our first hero that summons a mega fiend against somebody. So that is definitely going to be very interesting. I may spend gems on the next Untold Tales 1 event that comes out. We're going to be getting costume Domi Ventus introduced into the game, and I would love to have him. Any of those costume Untold Tales heroes that have the Insanity Resist are really, really good and are going to be very useful for when we get into Insanity Wars. I may also spend gems on the challenge event when that comes next week. We're going to be getting another new bard introduced into the game, and I really want Astrid still, so... We'll see if I end up spending gems on that. I probably will, but not going to be spending gems on this tower summon. Let me know if you guys end up doing any polls, and if you get lucky, drop a comment down below. But that is it for today's video. I hope you did enjoy it or found it helpful. And if you did, hit that like button. Make sure you're subbed to my channel, and I'll catch you guys next time.